Welcome back to official Hyperspin tutorials with the AV Archivist. Last time we discussed Hyperspin system databases. Today, we'll begin learning how to add and audit games so we can finally play them through Hyperspin. This example will deal specifically with setting up ROM-based console systems. As these are typically the simplest systems to set up, this tutorial will serve as a fundamental overview of the process. Subsequent, shorter tutorials will follow to highlight some of the key differences in setting up disk-based systems, MAME, Daphne LaserDisc, and PC games. Continuing from where we left off, we need to create a ROMs folder with which to house our games. This folder can be anywhere, and you can use multiple folders in separate locations if you're limited by available hard drive space. As much as possible, I like to house my ROMs within the Hyperspin folder. Within this ROMs folder, create another new folder corresponding to the system you're setting up preferably using the exact same nomenclature as Hyperspin and Rocket Launcher so as to stay organized. Place your ROMs there once done. If you're unsure as to the type of files with which your emulator is compatible, you can double check extensions in the Global Emulators tab. Now we need to tell Rocket Launcher where to find these ROMs. Open Rocket Launcher UI and proceed to the Systems Emulators tab. Click the plus icon next to the ROM Paths parameter and browse to your ROM location for this specific system. If you put your ROMs for this system in multiple locations, repeat the process until all of the locations are listed. If you ever need to change a location at a later date, you can use the Update Selected ROM Path option, or you can use the X icon to delete a selected ROM path. Once your ROM locations are listed, move to your Games tab, and in the System Audit sub-tab, select the Audit All Games for This System icon. As you can see, unless your ROMs were pre-named to be Hyperspin ready, they're not going to match the games in the database. This means we need to rename them. You can do this manually, but I'm going to show you a tool that will get the job done easily when working with ROM-based systems. Before we begin, please note that prior to using a tool to automatically rename your ROMs, it's generally a good idea to back them up somewhere, if able. When ready, go to your Hyperspin folder and press Ctrl Shift N to create a new folder, naming it Utilities. Inside this Utilities folder, create another new folder called Audit Tools. In the description below, I've provided links to some programs that will come in handy throughout your time with Hyperspin. Download, at a minimum, Don's Hyperspin tools. I'll personally be working with version 4.2.6 as I find it to be the most stable iteration across all platforms. The latest beta does offer some additional options, however, and you're welcome to take it for a spin. Extract Don's Hyperspin tools to its own location within the Audit Tools folder and run hyperspinromrenamer.exe. Take a moment to read all of the About information, then browse to your database XML, your ROM folder, and to the folder where you want the rename ROMs to be temporarily placed. Click Scan when ready. This tool uses Cyclic Redundancy Check, or CRC, values to identify, isolate, and rename ROMs to match your database. A CRC match means you have the exact same ROM as that which was used when creating the official database. If a ROM is indicated to be missing but you do have a working copy of it, it just means it's not an identical CRC match. You can either attempt to locate a pure, identical ROM, or you can opt to manually rename the working ROM to match your database. With the latest version of Don's Hyperspin tools, you also have the option of disabling CRC matching entirely and using fuzzy logic instead. I prefer CRC matching whenever possible. The value of CRC matching becomes especially apparent if working with ROMs that are patched with fan translations, and in general it provides an additional layer of confidence that your ROMs are good, and that they'll play without issue. Once the scan is complete, you'll get a report showing how many games are matched and how many are missing. You have the option to rename all of the matched ROMs, or to save a list of the various results. Let's select Rename, after which you can take some time to locate any ROMs that may have been missing, and to move the rename games into the appropriate ROMs folder. Once that's done, feel free to delete your temporary rename folder. When you're satisfied, return to Rocket Launcher UI and audit your games once more, manually filling in or correcting any gaps until you're happy with the result. In general, if Rocket Launcher can see and interact with a game, that game will be highlighted green. If not, it will be red. At the bottom of the window, Rocket Launcher tells you how many games it was able to find relative to the database you provided it. If you've been following along with the series up to this point, you should now finally be able to run your games. Select any green highlighted game in the list and click the Launch Selected Game Through Rocket Launcher icon to take it for a test run. If it doesn't work, you'll want to try to manually run the game through the emulator itself. This is always the first step in the troubleshooting process as, if you can't get a game to work outside of Hyperspin, it won't work with it. Some emulators can natively run compressed ROMs while others can't. So you can also try experimenting with the affected system's settings, main settings, 7-zip option, 
by toggling Enabled to True or to False. If an emulator does support compressed ROMs, it's desirable to set this to False so as to avoid issues with preserving save files in some emulators. As mentioned in an earlier video, be sure to read and follow all module notes for the emulator you're using. Once you have the games running in Rocket Launcher, they should load correctly in Hyperspin itself. All that's left for you to do from a gameplay perspective is to configure your controller inputs, the process for which could vary depending upon the emulator and the controls you're using. As a final note, keep in mind that most systems are capable of working with compressed ROMs either natively or via 7-zip support using the temporary extraction path we defined during initial hyperspin and rocket launcher installation. This can save a respectable chunk of hard drive space over time, and for many systems there's no noticeable detriment to loading speeds. Larger games, like those stored on disk images, can take some time to extract, however. This is a consideration we'll discuss more in an upcoming video. Every system in Hyperspin is a little different, but the skills you learn today can be applied throughout your Hyperspin experience. Over the next several episodes, before delving into aesthetic customization, we'll briefly discuss some of the additional steps required in order to get different types of systems working. In the meantime, congratulations on achieving playability with the first system in your setup. Thanks for watching, game on, and have a great day.